Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for an out-of-the-pack review of an event-only miniature from several years back, and this is the Davinite Lodge Priest, a fascinating model. Now, here's a history on this one. This was one of the event-only miniatures from 2013, so it's four years old now. Yeah, maybe going on for five. It was first released at the Horus Heresy Weekender in 2013. And I'm quite fond of these event-only sculpts. There's some really fascinating models in them, and particularly some of the earlier ones. I mean, my very early followers of the channel may remember watching a review of the Expeditionary Navigator, one of my earlier, probably less polished videos. Around the same time, I believe, this miniature was also available, the Davenite Lodge Priest. And for those of you who don't know, and I'm sure most of you do, the Davinites were of course instrumental in the corruption and fall to chaos of Horus Lupercal, the war master himself. I've managed to get hold of an original and genuine copy of this miniature, and what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to get it out of the pack, take a look at it, and well just share a few observations about this interesting miniature. Let's start off with a look actually at the packs. It's one of these typical single blisters. You can tell it's a bit older because they were a little bit less professional with the printing. If you look at the printing clarity on this, clearly they've moved to higher grade printers since they did this. That doesn't matter at all. What about the actual miniature? Well, here we go. It's a multi-part model. It has quite a lot of parts and it comes with a base. So we're going to get this out. This miniature has some good heritage as far as the Horus Heresy goes artistically. People who've watched my reviews of the Legio Custodes Terminators will remember that I really like how the sculptor Will Hayes captured the look of the Adrian Smith artwork. And this is another one of those miniatures for slightly different people. This was sculpted by Mark Bedford, who's a sculptor and artist at Forge World, and it is based on a piece of art from the Collected Vision series of Horus Heresy art books by the Black Library. And it was drawn in the inimitable style of John Blanche. That's the background. Let's take a look. So we get the figure, or the body of the figure, a weapon arm, a spiky shoulder pad, and a cable. And then there's a couple of parts as and standard 25 millimeter base. And there's a couple of bits scooting around in here now. I've already done a little bit of recce of this model and I've noticed that one of the horns has come off the head of the Lodge Priest. Now it's quite a delicate model and this is four years old so I'm guessing this has been bounced around a bit. I'm not going to shake the rest of this pack out because I know the horn's in there. I'm going to need to do a repair job with some wire so I'll leave that to there. I so have a weapon arm. Okay so I've just adjusted the camera angle a little bit because I was a bit in shadow before. So let's start off with a look around this miniature. That's better, I can actually see it now. As I say, yes, this was sculpted by Mark Bedford and inspired by artwork from John Blanche. And the Davenites were a race of, well, they were humans, but they were also chaos worshippers and they had been corrupted. And it was their warrior lodgers that were instrumental in the corruption of Horus. And we can see straight away that Mr. Bedford has done a fantastic job of capturing the slightly altered nature of these humans on account of his interesting head protrusions come spikes. Very interesting feature on this is these neck extending rings that this humanoid appears to be wearing. You can see that his ears, I think it's a he, have also been I don't know, affected by chaos. So it's not quite human, but it looks deviant to the human. Great face, yeah. And uh, looks like it has a pair of fangs as well. These neck rings, and I'm sure you've seen photos, but some of the peoples of Myanmar, or Burma, as we used to know it in the United Kingdom, the women of the tribe have this tradition of extending their necks through these neck rings. And in that culture, it's a symbol of, I believe, marital faithfulness to their husbands. And indeed, it's a mark of shame. If someone is adulterous, the woman loses her neck rings. For this particular character, I don't know if there's anything to do with that. It looks pretty good. Might be a little bit of a mold seam to deal with there. I think so. But yeah, great miniature. And I just love the way it's been sculpted and if you've not seen the original John Blanche art, do check it out. When I come to build this and do a figure review of it, I will actually show you the art as well. But it's it's quite easy to find on the internet. But yeah, great model. Right, 
And now let's move on to the weapon, or the first of the Davenite priest's two weapons. And this is some sort of flamethrower or projector of unpleasant liquids. You can tell it's a flamethrower from a 40k universe, but it looks highly divergent compared to anything you would normally see. This little bit here is going to connect onto this tube here, which in turn is going to connect to this tank on the back of a lodge priest. So this is quite a fine, delicate miniature, and I suspect a little bit of careful pinning with very thin piano wire may be in order. But a cool look. I don't actually know if they did any rules for the Lodge Priest at the time. However, in later years, and particularly around the time of Book 5, there are characters uh, and army lists in the Militia List that certainly allow you to make a Davenite force with uh, such characters, if I remember rightly. And then finally, or next, we have this unpleasant looking blade that the Priest is carrying, perhaps tainted by chaos, who knows? Then just to go back to this, as I say, you've got this tube which connects a flamethrower to the tank that the priest is carrying. And then this peculiar looking thing is the opposite arms shoulder pad with all sorts of chaotic designs. You might imagine that these, yeah, there's a pair of snakes coiled around the spiny protrusion. Yeah, I do like that. Great looking model, yeah. This really is a fascinating sculpt, to be sure. And if you are a collector of the Sons of Horus, or even, and maybe as much if not more so, the word bearers, the inclusion of this model in an army would be um, very neat. And certainly if you were a word bearer force with some militia, one of these guys will be a great thing to have along. So there you have it, the Horus Heresy event-only Davenite Lodge Priest from 2013, sculpted by Mark Bedford and based on the inimitable art of John Blanche. I really like this model and I'll be very interested to hear in the comments what you think about it, particularly if you bought it at the time or maybe you bought one and you've been keeping it for a special occasion. Maybe you know something else about some rules that were made available at the time for using this miniature in games of Horus Heresy. As always, I'll be very interested to hear your thoughts. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time, and goodbye.